Kinetic energy, which is abbreviated by the letter capital K, I occasionally use KE, is energy of motion, like this rocket. We calculate kinetic energy based on only the mass and the speed. We don't care what direction it's going, and we don't care where it is. Potential energy, in general, is an idea of stored energy. We use the capital letter U, and we frequently will give it a subscript to denote what type of potential energy we are talking about. This picture is representing gravitational potential energy, which is very common, but not the only one we are going to talk about. So potential energy is just stored energy that we could later see in a different type, but exists in this case based on the position. So the type of stored energy we usually are concerned with for potential is stored in terms of position. The last type of energy we're going to in introduce right now is thermal energy. And this glowing horseshoe here, you immediately know that it's hot, and that is the idea of thermal energy. And here uh, we use just E sub TH for thermal. This is going to be something that we see a little bit later when we talk about thermodynamics in a few weeks, but we do talk about it now since this is clearly a different type of energy unrelated to its position and unrelated to its speed. When we talk about energy, we need to return to thinking about our system and the environment. So the reason that this happens is that we are look, going to be looking at energy that is transferred from our environment to our system or removed from our system to the environment. Now this picture is going to show two things right now, heat and work. For the remainder of this uh, section, chapters 9 and 10, we're only going to focus on work. We will talk about heat later in thermodynamics. Within the system, we have many different types of energy. I've already introduced you to the idea of kinetic potential and thermal energies. There's also chemical energies, which we frequently don't talk about, um, but you know certainly that it exists. So within our system, we can actually transform energy from one type to another, and any time that we're adding or removing energy from our system, we call it work. And the next two chapters will be explaining what these ideas are. When we transfer energy, we call that work, and two examples of doing this is, for instance, this athlete throwing a shot put, and it, the athlete is the environment, the shot put, this ball, is our system. So by the athlete exerting a force on the shot put that is initially at rest, eventually that shot put is moving. It has kinetic energy. So exerting a force on the shot put and giving it energy, we call that work. You can also do this with potential energy. This is a person pulling the rubber band of a slingshot back. So again, the person is the environment and the slingshot is the system. The person is exerting a force on the rubber band, stretching it. So this object now has changed its position and you know that energy is stored. As soon as the person lets it go, this uh, rock in the slingshot is going to fly forwards. So it's possible to do work to create potential energy. We can also transform energy, and this is now within our system. So in the first case, we would think of the system as actually the earth and the person. So the person standing on the, the edge here initially had potential energy, and that was gravitational potential energy due to a height difference between the person here and where the person later can be at the surface of the water. The person leaps off and gradually gains speed. We call that the potential energy transforming into kinetic energy. And we will talk about this a lot. This does, of course, relate to situations you already know about involving forces, accelerations, speeds, time, position. This is actually just a different way to deal with it. Another type of transformation is from kinetic into thermal. And this is a picture of a meteor. And as it enters the Earth's atmosphere, it gets very, very hot and actually burns up. And so this would, in fact, make it slow down. And in the case of the meteor, it usually is actually disintegrating as well. Another example is if you use uh, take your hands and rub them together really quickly, the friction actually takes your kinetic energy of the motion of your hands and turns it into heat, warmth that you can actually feel. So kinetic energy can turn into thermal energy, usually through friction. The energy principle is really related to the idea of conservation of energy, which will be an important thing we come back to. But when we talk about the energy principle, we're not quite to 
conservation of energy yet. We're starting very general. And we're saying that the change, remember delta means change, the change in energy of our system is equal to the work done by the environment on the system or the external work on our system. So what this is saying is that if we don't do any work on our system, if no in external forces or external heat enters our system, this change in energy in our system is zero. So effectively, this is another way of saying energy is not created or destroyed. It can be transformed within our system or transferred in from the outside. I'd now like to introduce a really important model. This is called the basic energy model because it doesn't actually include heat, which we're not going to need for a few chapters. So whenever we transform energy within the system between kinetic, potential, and thermal, it is transformed without loss, meaning that I can take some portion of my kinetic and it would become a potential, but we would never see energy appear or disappear within our system when it's being transformed. Energy can be transferred in and out, and we always think about the energy in our system. So giving the system energy is positive work done on the system. Taking energy out is negative work done on the system. And when we talk about work done on the system, this is always going to tie back to specific identifiable forces. If we said that, say that this is an isolated system, meaning that it does not interact with its environment, and interaction here is a force in particular, that means that you can't have any work done positive or negative on the system. So if you have no energy leaving and no energy coming in, we say that energy is then conserved, that the total energy in our system is always the same. So the energy principle is this idea that, again, the change in system energy can be traced to either energy coming in or energy going out. So the place where this is going to fail is if we actually need to think about heat, but that won't be happening until we think about thermodynamics. Again, there's going to be different ways to transfer energy in, and heat is just one uh, specific case. So this is going to be something that we tease out and we understand what it means to do work and how to calculate that and what it actually means to have these different types of energy and how we calculate them.